Joining me now, Oklahoma Senator and member of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee and Senate Finance Committee, James Langford. Um, great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Let me ask you this. You. you know, the president um, talking there, a former president, about the situation potentially getting worse. We already know that the system is very strained right now. How is it possible that the administration could let it get worse from here? Yeah, they let it get worse by opening the doors in the earliest days. Uh, President Biden at the very beginning declared the emergency is over at the border, and so we don't need additional measures. He took away what's called Title 42 authority for those 17 and younger, where we could actually return them back to their country, which means we've got a flood of folks coming in, 17 and younger, into the country. And in uh, February, we had 100,000 plus people that were apprehended crossing the border. Now, that is 60,000 larger than the previous February. That's before. Before COVID time periods, because I've had some folks say, well, COVID slowed that down. Not true. Before COVID, it's still 60,000 plus higher than the previous February. And even though the president has declared the emergency is over, just this week he sent down the Federal Emergency Management, FEMA, uh, to be able to go help with this uh, crazy chaos that's down there and uh, trying to be able to manage it. So this, this is a crisis of his own making and of his own design, beginning with, I'm going to stop uh, the, the border construction, I'm going to end any kind of of quote unquote emergency the border and I'm going to allow folks 17 and younger to be able to come into the country. That's a real shift. And Senator, the irony here is the fact that the administration won't acknowledge that it has a crisis on its hands. At the same time, President Biden now saying don't come. Those are his words. He is telling the migrants don't flood the southern border. But at the same time, you've got um, loose policy with respect to the action that's being taken and a president who's just, you know, sort of yelling out don't come. I mean, it, it just seems so, so wildly inappropriate. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Uh, obviously, Ali Mayorkas, uh, when we went through the nomination portion, I asked him from the dais, what's your message to the migrant caravans? And his response was, not yet. Okay, well, that, that's not a don't come. That was a clear message from the very beginning. Give us a couple of days to get ready, and then we will welcome you in. But when he says not yet, uh, that's clearly a signal to be able to come. And when they stop the border wall construction, I was just down in Arizona this weekend in that area around Nogales. And in that area where they, quote, unquote, stopped the border wall construction, they have stopped all construction. But the only thing that was left to do was close in the gates. So literally the Biden team said, don't close in the gates, leave those open, but have everything else still complete. That is, com there's only one reason that you would say do everything except don't close in the gates because you want to welcome people through those gates and to make sure they're not finished. And so it is a very different message that he can say in Washington, D.C. versus what they're actually sending down in the message down to Central America. And Senator, there's a lot of um, concern and criticism right now that you have an administration not acknowledging this crisis is happening at the border, really more focused on its spending plans and trying to um, ram them through Congress, essentially, um, and that, you know, this is an administration that really should have its eyes on everything and really be listening to the American people who don't want some of these policies in place. And this isn't what President Biden campaigned on, yet you've got some of the more progressives in the party sort of pushing this agenda, and he is pandering to them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this is not what he campaigned on. I think quietly he was always saying to the progressives, get me in, let me do what I want to do during the campaign, and then I'll take care of you once I get there. But he made it very clear that he wanted to be a unifier and he wanted to be able to work across the aisle. Uh, as That's what he said publicly. And then, again, privately, once he actually started, uh, it was, no, I'm not going to work across the aisle at all. It's a $2 trillion package uh, for COVID when we already still had a trillion dollars remaining from the previous year's uh, packages that were still out there as unspent. So he, he just wanted to do the biggest package ever, and so he does $2 trillion. Now he's proposing an infrastructure package of $4 trillion. Uh, that would put us on tap for this year, spending $10 trillion in this year if he chooses to be able to ram that through on a straight partisan vote, as he's threatened as well. So it is an enormous amount of spending, and this is exactly what we said. This is going to cause inflation. This is going to cause even more instability, and it's going to cause us even to be more dependent on all these loans from China. 
that yeah. is a problem for our economy. It's an astronomical figure, and so many of the experts say that the economy is in good shape right now. We don't even need that kind of spending. Um, but I want to switch gears for a moment uh, to talking about reforming the filibuster, because President Biden telling ABC News that he would back changing Senate rules, forcing senators to speak on the floor to hold up bills. Um, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell saying that the move would make the Senate look like a, quote, 100-car pileup, never moving. Um, Senator, I want to get your take. Do you expect the Democrats um, to change the rules here? Yeah, the Democrats have been pushing to change the rules since last year and made the statement that if we get the Senate, we're going to change the filibuster rules. And so they're trying to make up all these excuses because this bill's not moving or this bill's not moving. We're going to now have to change the rules. They've talked about this for months and they've made it very, very clear that if they get control of the House, the Senate and the White House, they want to change the rules and to be able to ram through whatever that they want to be able to do. Uh, it, it, the odd part about this is Biden for years when he was in the Senate was an adamant opposition to changing the filibuster. Buster, now that he's in the presidency, it's like, change it so I can do what I want. 33 Democrats signed onto a letter just four years ago saying, do not change the filibuster. And now they're unilaterally saying, well, just kidding. Uh, now that we're in power, we're going to be able to do that. It's total hypocrisy on it. There's a reason that you have a Senate that's different than the House, because the Senate is designed to be the one place where both sides are always heard that is good for America to be able to have a place where debate happens rather than I just ran through what I want. We do not need one house in the on that has one set of rules and then the senate to have the exact same rules of the house yeah it's good for us to be able to have this kind of debate it certainly is and there are so many people even when um the presidency changes hands and and power is shifted say you know what there are checks and balances in the system and that's what they're there for and so you want to preserve that um senator james langford wonderful to see you this morning thank you good to see you as well